So anthropology tends to have a growing importance in our world. What is a hot topic in the subject? One of the kind of, you know, most important crises of the contemporary moment, and therefore one of the most important things that we have to try and think through as anthropologists, is the environmental crisis. And when I talk about the environmental crisis, I mean, it's a crisis in so many other things as well. We can't limit it to the environment. It, but talking about the environment allows us to talk about kind of inequality, capitalism, global commodity trades, all of these things. And it's kind of thinking about the environment in this broader and more political way that kind of shapes what we do in the MA programme that I convene. And we really try and tackle some of these questions. So what makes anthropology at SOAS different? It's a great question. And I think SOAS is a really special and unique place to study anthropology. In our department, part of what makes it really special is we have these four research clusters, which also mm. shape the teaching that we do. These are in these kind of four key contemporary issues. So we have a center for the anthropology of food, migration and diaspora studies, medical anthropology and mental health, and we also have an environment research cluster as well. Um, and this kind of really shapes it, the teaching that we do. And I think the fact that we're studying these big global issues, but from this really grounded perspective that SOAS offers, you know, because it's this super diverse place, because you get a chance to study different kinds of languages as yeah. part of your degree, it gives a kind of really unique way to study these entangled kind of global global issues. Mm. What's your favourite floor of the library at SOAS? I think as long as I'm by that big, beautiful window, then yes. I don't mind. When I was a student here, I used to love sitting there and I think oh. I spent more time looking out of the window than I did at the books, but it's a great view. <laughs> Yeah, the views are incredible, honestly. So Alice, what is your favourite book to read at the moment or show? I'm actually at the moment coming to the end of my novel um, and it's a book called Emergency by an author called Daisy Hilliard and it's kind of a reworking of the genre of nature writing and I think sometimes nature writing can be a little bit twee, a little bit mm -hmm. romanticising, sorry if anybody out there <laughs> really loves it. Um, but this is really great because it's kind of dark, it's gritty, and it goes into the kind of the cruelty of the relation between humans and the natural world, as well as kind of the beauty of those relations. And it's all told through the eyes of a child. So it kind of gives it this surreal, uh, surreal air. And it's really cool. What is your favourite city or country to visit? I have to say that my favourite country to visit is Malaysia, where I do my mm. fieldwork, because it has the best food in the world. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, but this summer I went for the first time to New York and that's maybe become my favourite city to visit just because of the, the vibes. It's great. Not the rats, none of that. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, I've seen more rats in London than I did in New York. So, oh, really? yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. And what is your favourite thing studying at SOAS? I know that you were a previous student here. How does it feel to also convene a course? It's a very surreal experience to come back and be on the other side of the room in a place where you were once the student. So I was a student here. I studied an amazing MA program called MA Music and Development. It actually doesn't run anymore. Mm. Um, and now I'm convening a relatively new program. I think it's in its fourth year. It's called the MA Anthropology of Global Futures and Sustainability. So I've switched disciplines, which also adds to the kind of surreal experience, but it's amazing. And we do so many cool things in this program and we have a, a great bunch of students and we're kind of really concerned with looking at sustainability, not kind of just as a an environmental concern but as a social concern and something that's kind of deeply political as well and trying to untangle some of those things and ask these questions about why is it that we haven't yet got to a sustainable yeah. place and yeah. kind of figure that out together. So how do you ensure that the voices of marginalised groups are represented in your work to do with ethnography? That's a really important question and I think it's one that's very difficult to answer in a concise way because it's a really open question that I think everybody who's an anthropologist is kind of constantly grappling with as you go through the process of fieldwork but also mm -hmm. the process of writing. That question of how do you ensure a kind of realistic and, and subtle representation of actually what people mean and what they say and, and what they share with you. So just to kind of focus in on one aspect, for me one of the most important things is language. Um, and so in my work specifically, and I know that a lot of anthropologist colleagues do this, I think it's really, really important to learn languages really thoroughly, to not go through the kind of lingua franca of a region, but to learn the language that people speak every day amongst each other. Mm. Um, and then once that's done, you have to really kind of carefully pay attention to the the process of translation, yeah. because it's actually often not easy to represent the sense of 
what somebody is saying in their own language into English, obviously kind of a, a colonial language yeah. that doesn't neatly map on to the contours and subtleties of what you might find in indigenous languages. So I think part of how we tackle that is just kind of awareness to that problem and constant reflection on, on what it is to, to deal with that. Yeah, the power of language is yeah. so important. <laughs> and so what is your favourite period of human history? A period in human history that I've been thinking a lot about recently because I think it's very significant um, is the kind of post-war, Cold War period. So because I work on kind of plantations and environmental anthropology, that's when you see this kind of rapid expansion of things like the plantation industry, genetically modified crops, um, monocropping, vast scale agriculture, all of those things that kind of be began in the colonial period, but kind of uh, became the enormity that they are today during that latter period. So I've been reading and thinking a lot about that period of time quite recently. And so Alice, what is a quote that really guides much of your work? So I think one quote that really sticks in my mind, um, that's by one of my favourite anthropologists, who's called Michel Rolf Trio, is a quote that comes from his book, Silencing the Past. It's kind of about, it's about power and the production of history. Mm. And the quote is, the ultimate mark of power is its invisibilization. The ultimate challenge is the excavation of its roots. And I think that really covers so much of what we try to do as anthropologists. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's a guiding one. Thank you very much, Alice. Really enjoyed this talk. Thank you so much, Halima. Amazing questions. <laughs>